Hi everyone, welcome to TSAM Digital. My name is Amy and today I'm joined by Nanda Kumar, who is Product Director at Six Financial. So welcome Nanda, great to have you. Thank you Amy, thanks for having me. So Nanda, obviously you joined us at the Summit for Asset Management East Coast last week in New York and following on from the event, obviously we thought we'd touch base with you and just catch up about some of the themes that you discussed on the technology stream with the panel discussion. So just to get us started, could you tell us a little bit about yourself and about SIX? Sure. So as, 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 uh, as you mentioned, my name is Nanda Kumar. I'm, on the, I'm a product director uh, and also I work with all our data offerings at, at SIX Financial. Uh, a little bit of information about uh, SIX. So we are part of the SIX group. So SIX Financial is the, uh, is the financial data provider arm of SIX group. But we also own the uh, Swiss Stock Exchange and the Spanish Stock Exchange. We provide uh, banking services and security security services in Switzerland. But the bottom line is we uh, we we uh, operate the uh, infrastructure for the Swiss Financial Center. So that's who uh, Six is, and uh, and I've been with Six Financial for you know over twenty years. Wow, that's great. So very comprehensive um, involvement with the industry then across different regions. Um, and obviously you said you specialize in data and you've been there for a long time. So can you tell us a little bit about some of the common pitfalls that you've seen? Could be the US, could be across these different markets you mentioned when it comes to enterprise data management and architecture, as well as some of the governance practices. Yeah, so this is, you know, this, this is interesting, right? We, we talk about, you know, enterprise data management is not something new. It's, it's been in place for, for a number of years, I would say decades. But when you talk to the, the, the marketplace, when you talk to our clients, some of the challenges that existed in the past continue to be present even today. And one of the biggest things, and you probably hear this time and time again, is, is legacy systems. There are a lot of larger uh, institutions that continue to use legacy systems that makes data manage, management a, a, a bit of a challenge. Uh, another area that always creeps up is the fact that uh, there are disparate uh, siloed databases, databases that don't talk to each other, databases that might have uh, very, uh, you know, different quality standards. What all this does is when you, when, when an institution is trying to merge the different data sets using the legacy systems, this poses a huge challenge. As a result, what ends up happening is, you know, when there are different data sets, different quality standards, it ends up being the fact that the different systems are not able to map the different entities that need to be mapped together to present the full picture. So that is some of the challenges, some of the pitfalls that we have been seeing and we continue to see. Yeah, absolutely. Legacy systems are one that come up all the time, not just in financial services, but across the industries, of course, especially with the older institutions, as you say, that have those, those big data sets. So when, when we talk about what kind of data we're dealing with then, what, what is the data? Like, wh which are the ones that are being managed? What are the complex data sets out there? And how does this affect what kind of systems can be used to merge them effectively? Sure. So, you know, so, so coming from a data background, uh, which is what I do, you know, we have seen, uh, you know, the marketplace, uh, the, the dramatic changes that we have seen in the marketplace when it comes to the different types of data that have been introduced over time. Uh, on a daily basis, we continue to see new asset classes. So if you go back in time, you know, uh, the, some of the asset classes that we are, are dealing with today did not even exist. It wasn't even a thought. So when you bring in asset classes that are, are new, that immediately becomes a challenge when you're trying to manage data. As a result of new asset classes, there's also new data sets. That, that are being introduced, which tends to be more and more complex. And here are a couple, some examples, right? You take the prospectus or terms and conditions. When you talk about an equity or a, 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 you know, a, a fairly regular fixed income security, I would say it's relatively straightforward. But then you start adding the, the, the word of derivatives. You start talking about structured products where there are multiple features, underlying securities that come into play. The, the terms and conditions uh, uh, for these type of securities is, is very complex. 
You then add, you know, as we've seen uh, changes in the marketplace, uh, regulations. Regulations are playing an, an extremely important role today in, you know, in the financial data services and, and rightfully so. Managing regulations. Uh, a lot of the government have started uh, imposing taxes based on transactions being made. So that's another area that needs to be managed. And then you finally bring in an age-old problem that we have had is corporate actions. Corporate actions have become extremely complex, especially in the world where uh, uh, decisions have to be made based on what an uh, institution is offering when it comes to a corporate action. So if, if you can see where I'm going, you know, uh, I think the, 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 you know, the, our marketplace, rightfully so, has not been static. So, on a, on a, so, so it's been extremely challenging managing the various new asset classes, new data types, and bringing, bringing them all together. And then you're dealing with technology. We talked about the whole world of you know, legacy database, et cetera. So you put all that together, yeah, data management you know, is, 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 is not an easy task. Yeah, absolutely. I definitely don't envy <laughs> the chiefs dealing with this day to day because it's definitely a mammoth task to um, attempt to accomplish. Um, but from a solution point of view then, because obviously those are some of the challenges which a lot of our viewers will relate to, very, very yep. common in the industry. How do you improve data accuracy? How do you align those data sets better? How do you, obviously you can upgrade the systems, but what, what is the step-by-step -step that you would recommend to people? Yeah, so I think, you know, and, and one of the models that we have taken is to uh, come up with a, a, a data model that links the various data sets together. Uh, obviously, when you talk about the reference data, you talk about corporate actions, talk about regulatory content, all of these are data sets that are connected to each other. So having a, a data model that is capable of, of connecting the dots, if I may, uh, is, is a huge step in, in overcoming some of these obstacles. So for example, what we have built out is a data model um, that, that before we provide the end results to our client base, we are doing the front end or the back end connections or knitting, like I call it. So an example, if, if a corporate action occurs and the corporate action uh, results in a new entity being formed, or if there's a corporate action that obviously affects the, the, the valuation of a particular security, what we have tried to do is bring all the data sets together, connect them beforehand. Similarly, if there's a tax implication on, on, a, on a particular transaction, we have built out a model that connects the various data sets. So we're able to provide the full set of data, which hopefully allows the, the, you know, the, the concept of straight through processing where clients don't have to bring in multiple uh, uh, data sets and then do the connections themselves, which add to the challenge of uh, you know uh, data management. So that's our approach. I mean, it's it's not necessarily you know something that every uh, uh, everybody can or or would want to do, but I, we look at that as maybe an ideal way to process uh, financial data. Absolutely. And then when we think about you know people are changing their legacy system, they're going through the whole process of merging the data. But people are also going through the on-prem versus cloud journey, you know, especially the older institutions again. So how does your technology and your solutions that you just mentioned with the data modeling come into that discussion? Like, does it have an advantage in one versus the other? Does it help assist with that migration? Yeah, so, you know, you, know, you mentioned cloud, right? So as, as you know, as, as uh, you know, more and more institutions move to uh, cloud-based applications, uh, you know, data exchange uh, uh, plays a vital role. So, you know, you want to think about a world where, you know, let's say there's a data provider, uh, like six, for example, makes all historical data, uh, you know, easily available in some form of a cloud architecture. What this will benefit is for clients to be able to query that data at any given point in time. When that happens, the data provider will then send back all the data that a customer is basically requesting, which in turn will uh, meet the needs of regulations, for example. So in theory, that data that's being returned is always from a, a, a trusted source. So what the client or the customer is finally able to do is combine this trusted source of data with 
their own internal data, things like that they would require. And ultimately, using the cloud architecture, send back any kind of compliance related back to the regulator. So, you know, so what this really helps is, is it, 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 it promises simplifications, higher efficiency than the highly decentralized approach that, in, that continues to exist today. So, so I think taking advantage of cloud architecture, I think is, is going to alleviate, alleviate some of the uh, data management challenges that we see, you know, that exist today. Yeah, absolutely. Completely agree there from obviously speaking with people in the industry who kind of shared their experiences at our events. Um, so closing thoughts then, uh, I know it's a, as we've said, a big task to achieve when it comes to enterprise data architecture, but if you had to project what you think will happen with the industry in the next five years and some steps that, you know, firms should take to get ahead, what would you say? What would you like to see happen in the industry? I think what, one, one of the things that we probably have to do as an industry is, is embrace standards. You know, I think standards, uh, you know, uh, will benefit some of and, or, and overcome some of these challenges. Because today we're talking, you know, you know when, when, we, when I talk about some of the, the challenges that we, have, that we have in place today, you know, complexity and uh, legacy systems, et cetera, uh, you know, another uh, uh, area that, that also plays a big role is, okay, if I'm the uh, consumer of the data, who am I getting this data from? Uh, and, and can I rely on, on the quality and, 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 and the, the various formats that the client, uh, that the, the vendor might be providing to me? So in addition to managing all these challenges, you're also, uh, wanting to make sure that you're receiving the data from trusted sources. So, so one, and, and what happens is that you, you know, you have multiple sources of data. Each of us, uh, in, in, in theory, uh, interpreting data in, 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 you know, in, in different fashions based on our internal data models. So I think, Standards, uh, you know, I would hope kind of brings everything together. So you're not, you know, so everybody's talking the same language you know, in, 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 in a sense. So, yeah, I know, I mean, there are a lot of standards, standards that exist today, but the hope is, you know, we as an industry embrace them even more, that, more so than we do today. So that will be something that I, 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 I hope uh, uh, starts playing a bigger role as, as we move forward. Yeah, very good point. And well, I guess we'll just have to watch the space and see if it, if that does happen and, you know, if it helps out with, with these challenges. So um, I think that's all we've got time for today. But of course, you know, Six Financial will be at some of our other events. So, you know, everyone can meet your team in person at the summits. And of course, you'll be on our channel again. So I hope to speak with you very soon, Nanda. And thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you very much. Looking forward to it. And thanks everyone for watching.